an honor to be interviewing Coach Kahn, the head coach for the SFA football team, and Zach Kahn, the starting QB of the SFA football team today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. Can you describe, Clint, your career as a football coach and then you, Zach, as a player? Well, um, you know, I had the, the typical high school, college career and was very fortunate to have the opportunity to uh, have a cup of coffee in the National Football League um, and really had no intentions of being a football coach. And after my playing career was finished, um, I went back to my alma mater, Nickel State, and uh, served as a graduate assistant there for a couple of years and then uh, got into high school coaching. We had our oldest son, and uh, living on $500 a month as a graduate assistant was pretty difficult. Uh, but uh, enjoyed the two years of coaching high school football and then got back in the college game in 1987 and uh, have coached at various different universities. Uh, and I guess now, 33 years later, I'm starting my third year uh, as the head football coach at Stephen F. Austin. And uh, this will be my 17th year as a head football coach. So it's been a it's been an unbelievable journey, uh, the opportunity to impact and affect a lot of different lives, young people that have affected my life and my family's life along the way. And we've lived uh, throughout Louisiana, uh, Alabama, Arkansas, and now starting our third year here in Texas at Stephen F. Austin. So pretty exciting career. I've been very blessed. Well, blessed to have you too. I'm happy, but... <laughs> Uh, so Zach, how about your career as a player? Uh, it's been, like he said, a great journey. Uh, I started fourth grade, fourth grade playing for the Pee Wee League Cowboys, and uh, I was a quarterback ever since day one. Oh. And so fourth through high school, I was quarterback, and then uh, had the privilege of getting recruited to UTSA as a quarterback. Played there for two years. Um, you know, had some challenges I had to overcome, and then you know everything happens for a reason. So I decided to transfer and come here to Stephen F. Austin and play for the old man. And don't regret it whatsoever. Uh, I've had a great experience doing it. And I got one more year. Looking forward to it. Uh, the past few years have been great, and uh, hopefully this year is the best. Is this the first time you've been his coach? Yes, um, actually, by design never coached any of our three sons. We have a 32-year-old, a 27-year-old, and of course Zach is, is, is 22. By design, growing up, whether it be soccer, or baseball, basketball, football, obviously, I've never, I've never coached. I didn't think that would be appropriate. It's what I do for a living, and we have volunteer you know, dads and uncles and neighborhood leaders that you know, coach these young men. And, it really was a family discussion when he decided to leave Texas San Antonio to come to Stephen F. Austin. And I don't think he probably would have left San Antonio uh, had his position coach, his coordinator, and his recruiting coach all left. And you know, at the time, we were in the central Arkansas area, and he was 10 hours from home. But then when we came to Stephen F. Austin, based on those circumstances, it was a family decision for him uh, you know, because He's cursed with the last name. He plays the most high-profile position on the football team, or any football team. And um, certainly he had to not only win the job, but win it in a way that everybody could see that he was clearly the best player. So that in itself presented some challenges uh, for Zach uh, and for myself. But uh, as he mentioned, uh, there's nothing regrettable about his decision to, to transfer. It's been great for our football team, obviously. It's been great for our community. Certainly our family has, uh, has piggybacked on, on his time here. Every Saturday in the fall, uh, we'll have anywhere from 10 to 15 family and friends come in to, you know, to watch our games. Now, of course, when he finishes playing, it'll probably be like two. <laughs> but um, but it has been a, it's been a, and he's made that easy because of the type of young man he is, the type of player he is, uh, the unselfishness that he's shown and uh, the competitive person that he is. And he's, he's obviously pretty good at his craft, too. So that's made that a very easy transition. But yes, it's the first time I've ever coached any of the boys. Uh, and so, uh, but it's been fun. But Zach's made it fun. 
what has the, and you've already talked to this up, uh, anything else you want to add to what it's been like being the head coach and starting QB for SFA football? Well, from the head coach's perspective, I left a place at the University of Central Arkansas where I've been the head coach for 14 years. Uh, blessed to have worked with some very talented coaches. Uh, we put a program in place and had a high level of success with championships and postseason appearances. And graduated literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young men during our time there. And we probably could have stayed there until I retired. But this is a job that since the early 2000s, that I've always felt was a diamond in the rough program. Uh, it was a program that was very inconsistent over the years. And, uh, but a program where I felt like we could achieve some really, really high goals. And so uh, we came here in 2014 with the mindset of building a program here. Of course, this guy came about the same time. He and his teammates had made that transition much easier. The first year we went to the, to the national playoffs, which really surprised us as a coaching staff, but also to a, a lot of people in our community. Um, but I also came because of the resources we have. You know, we're, we're in a hotbed of recruiting talent between Houston and Dallas, and uh, able to attract quality student athletes you know, to our program. And certainly, um, it was a wounded program when we got here. I mean, there was a reason there was a coaching change. But we feel like we're starting to continue to lay the layers of foundation like we did at the other program that we just left so that this program can not only have you know, successes now, but maintain that quality level of play for years to come. And, uh, so it's, uh, I needed that challenge in my life, and it was good for our family. It's obviously good to get Zach here. Uh, but we're excited about what we've done, where we are, and certainly where we're going. How about you, Zach? Just going, just hearing him say all that stuff, um, I kind of have a different look at it, you know, from a student athlete. Uh, SFA is always going to have a special place in my heart. Uh, you know, this is the first first place I've ever started at uh, college football. You know, I was at UTSA for two years, didn't really get much playing experience there. Came here, and my first start was against Kansas State in the 2014 season. Yeah, great way to open up the college career. Um, so memories like that will always stick with me. You know, I'm a college graduate from here. Uh, I've spent two and a half great years, got another half a year to go. Really looking forward to it. And being a quarterback here has really just um, meant a lot to me. It really has. Uh, it's a little boy's dream. You know, I, I told you all I started fourth grade. You know, ever since I was in fourth grade, I always wanted to be a college, uh, college football quarterback. Especially at the D1 level, it really means something special to me. And so there's, without no doubt, that Stephen F. Austin will have a special place in my heart. Um, so, Coach, uh, on the heels of that question, what should we plan on seeing from the SFA football team this year and in the future? National championship? Well, that's the <laughs> ultimate goal. Um, certainly, you know, when you look at the two years, we won eight games and, and, and made a playoff appearance, which was only, I think, the seventh one in school mm -hmm. history. Uh, in 2014 and last year we had a very talented football team the pieces just didn't all quite come together and that's my responsibility um, whether it be um, you know uh, injuries obviously affected us in some places talent was not where it needed to be we were competitive in every game we played with the exception of TCU which is an elite program I think they finished in the top three or four in the country last year um, so you know our first year we probably overachieved this past year we probably underachieved um, and uh, this year we're, we are really excited though about the pieces we do have in place, the experience we do have in coming back, um, the athleticism that we've been able to recruit, uh, particularly at some of the skill positions we think is going to help us. We were just talking off the air about you know, some of the young freshmen at receiver and defensive back areas of need for us uh, running back uh, that we feel are going to be able to impact our team this season along with a, a handful of transfers as well. With all that being said, uh, we've got a challenging schedule, but we think it's one that uh, we can handle this year, the way it's set up. Um, certainly open up at Texas Tech and Lubbock on national TV is a great profile for our players and our program and our community and our university, but that'll be a challenge in itself. Uh, but we're excited about the home schedule, the opportunity to play our, our rivals, both at home and in Houston. 
And uh, you know, our goal is to compete for a, for a conference championship to get into the postseason again. And uh, once you get into that, that tournament, anything can happen and thus that's how national championships. Uh, but we can't forget the process. It's about the process. We can have macro goals, but on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to respect the process that we're going, to, uh, going through so that we can achieve those macro type of goals. If we start thinking big picture and we forget about the detail and the journey, um, then we'll leave some things on the table and, and might not have the kind of year that we're capable of having. But not only are we focused on this year, but we also feel, as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of the layers of, of the foundation, it's like building a house. And um, you know, we've, we've got the concrete down, now we've got the walls up and we're starting to work on the roof. And, and then we hope it's a program that can sustain itself year in and year out as we replace great players and bring young players into the program. Um, Zach, as your college career is winding down, what do you plan on doing in the future? Um, well, hopefully, you know, I'm going to let football take me as far as it goes. Uh, you know, that could be a month, that could be a year, five years, ten years, fifteen years, make a career out of it, who knows. Uh, that's one of the goals that I think many college football players have in their life is to go to the next level, uh, whether it be for you know, a limited time or an extended amount of time. But after that, uh, however that goes, um, I plan on teaching and coaching, kind of following the footsteps of the old man. Uh, whether that takes me to the high school route or automatically into the college route, I don't know. But I plan on being a coach, that's for sure. Okay, so we're going to switch gears here a little bit with the questions. Um, Clint, how does, well, for both of you, how does your faith impact you as a father and a coach and um, then as a player and a person in the areas of your life? Well, first of all, the matriarch of our family is, 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 is my wife, Angel, and his mom. And, uh, you know, she has really set a great path for all the kids. And certainly for me as well, she's a great example. And, uh, you know, at times in our lives, we, we have to have balance. We have to have balance. It's not all work. It's not all play. Uh, you know, I went to 12 years of Catholic school and uh, eight in grammar school and, and four years at the high school level. And so my faith was formed early on. Now, uh, life is life. And sometimes we lose that balance, we lose that direction, we lose that compass. And, uh, you know, the good Lord has a way of pulling him closer to you. And uh, he's done that to me several times in my life. And it's made me refocus and rebalance. So uh, I know that through him, through the Holy Spirit, through attending Mass, you know, through ministries like we have here at St. Mary's, that I can find that balance to keep me personally in check as well as professionally. And uh, one of our coach's wives, who's also a parishioner here, passed me a note one day in chapel and said the great Vince Lombardi found his edge because he attended mass and services as often as he could. And that was a great reminder to me uh, as a coach, a father, a man, um, that I've got to have that spiritual spiritual direction in my life to create that balance in my life so it's not all college football or work or that kind of thing and that I am still a dad, I am still a husband, uh, I'm still a, you know, a professional in what I do, but uh, I've got to have that, that balance of faith um, and, and quite frankly St. Mary's offers me that right here on our campus. How about you, Zach? Um, as a student athlete, when times get tough, you got to have something to lean on. Uh, and obviously, I can lean on my family. I can lean on my uh, my teammates. But like you said, use the word balance there. St. Mary's and then my Catholic faith offers that balance. Uh, it, you know, it, you don't want to go to your family so much. Obviously, they're there for you, teammates. But you know, with this being open 24/7 and all that stuff and easy access, uh, easy access, and it gives me something to lean on when times get tough. You know. First year, you know, we had a great year. We won eight games, went to the national playoffs. It was a, it was a great season for us. And like you said, we ex exceeded a lot of expectations. You know, last year, we didn't exactly live up to expectations. And so times and need like that, when you need somebody to lean on, your faith in St. Mary's is something you can come to. 
Uh, you know, I went through a lot of injuries last year, didn't exactly me personally live up to the expectations that I set and that others set, teammates, coaches, community included. And so when the going got tough, I could come in here and really lean on my, my faith and, uh, and not so much ask a lot of questions, but just kind of express myself and let them know that I'm here and that I could use as much help as possible. It's amazing what you can leave at the altar. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. what you can leave there. And uh, you may not get the exact answer that you want, but you're going to get an answer. And, and, uh, everything happens for a reason. That's so. right. That's right. You talked a little bit about this, but what in general does Catholic, what does being Catholic mean to you? Um, you know, our our uh, our faith takes some hits and has taken some hits in the Christian community and. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a, our Catholic community and my Catholic faith gives me a place to go for community, um, spiritual guidance. Um, you know, you read the Old Testament, but more importantly, when you read the New Testament, you look at the, the journey of the apostles, you look at the journey of Jesus Christ, and um, it deepens your faith in what you believe in. And um, gives you that uh, that spiritual guidance that you need. And one thing that I do want to express here is that I respect all religions. And being a football coach, you can imagine the cross section of, of, of religions, from Catholic to Protestant to non-denominational to non-believers, that I've had to deal with, you know, over the years. And um, but I do try to keep a strong Christian thread, a strong Catholic thread in our, in our daily workplace and, and with our student athletes. We're gonna say the Lord's Prayer after practice and before games, and we're not gonna apologize for it. And to me, that is the, the, one of the baselines of our Catholic faith, and uh, is to, to recognize our Lord and Savior to forgive those hoping that we can receive forgiveness and that we keep him first and foremost uh, uh, in everything that we do. Sometimes that gets a little convoluted and cloudy, but uh, I hope to be a strong representative of the Catholic community. It has served me well in both time of need and, and good times. And as I mentioned earlier, you can always come in here and be safe. Being Catholic, To me, you have, you have to like the tradition about it. And, and in the Conk family, that's something we really are. We're very, very tradition. We love the, you know, the set in stone stuff, the set in weight stuff, like the Catholics are. The, the way mass goes, the way the prayers are going, uh, the rosary, everything like that. It's been for thousands and thousands of years. And, uh, and so that, to me, brings a sense of pride in being Catholic. Uh, and I'm not afraid to show it. You know, in my locker right now, I have the St. Michael prayer. Uh, I try to read it three to four times a day before I go lift, after I lift, before I shower, after I shower. Uh, obviously, then when we start camp, I'm gonna try to say it as much as I can before practice. I uh, just let them know that I'm thinking about them. Uh, not, not to ask, hey, let me have a good practice, but just let them know, hey, look over me. You know, don't make sure I don't roll an ankle today or, or blow out my knee or, or whatever it may be. But uh, it is, it gives me a sense of pride not just within myself, but within the community of, of the Catholic faith. That's great, St. Michael, it's a great prayer. How have you both been involved um, in the community at SFA, and then also specifically uh, at uh, St. Mary's Catholic Campus Ministry? Well, you know, um, we kind of gravitate as a family towards the campus ministries. I know at Louisiana Tech, which was right in the middle of the Bible Belt as well, you know, the Protestant Bible Belt, we kind of gravitated towards the campus ministry there, and we've done the same thing here in Nacogdoches, because um, we kind of like the smaller um, parishes that we can be involved with. And, um, I know uh, Agel has uh, been very active here with uh, different faith groups, as well as we have, you know, chosen to take on some projects here at, at, uh, at St. Mary's part of us giving back to the community. So 
we see it as an integral part for us as a family, but we also see that the impact that it's making on the young people uh, on our campus. You know, as we're as we're talking right now, there are about ten students right now working here at the at the church. Volunteering. And, yeah, volunteering, and you know they're learning about you know, giving back to their to their community, giving back to their, their faith, and. Um, I think that these are things, life lessons, that St. Mary's and these types of campus ministries have a chance to impact these 18 to 22, 23 year old students. And so, uh, but not just them, it's impacted our family because we gravitated to, you know, uh, currently Father Denzel. Just, just a tremendous amount of love and respect for him and, and uh, some of the ideas and you know, initiatives that he's taken really have us excited as a family and I think it has the, the student population excited as well so it's pretty awesome to be involved right now with all the, the things that are happening to our community here in Southern Arizona. Um, Zach, you talked a little bit about this already, um, maybe thanks Ben How has St. Mary's impacted your life? It gives me, I guess, a sense of security gives me a sense of uh, gives me gives me something to attach to I guess when going gets tough you know but not just as an athlete though as students especially and so I don't want students to feel like I just come here as an athlete but as a student you know all the te all the tests seem to be within one week all the teachers seem to put all the tests within the same day within the same week finals get tough projects get tough there might be somebody in your group that doesn't want to do any of the work and so you feel stressed, you feel frustrated about it, well, one of the best places to come get that off your chest and off your mind is here within St. Mary's. And uh, also a member, I guess there's two members, Powers and Dorian are two guys that I have gravitated to maybe more than he's gravitated to Coach, I mean, Coach Father Denzel. I've gra gravitated more towards Dorian Powers. Me and Dorian have launched once a week. Uh, that's what the focus group. Yeah, and he's in, he's the leader of the focus group, and uh, I can I can say that me and pops probably can agree that we want to do more within the community, but with our schedule and with how busy you are, it becomes tough. Uh, one of the things was his focus went to uh, I think went to Jerusalem over the spring. Not wanted to go. Me and Dorian had a very long conversation about doing. It. I said, dude, I want to do it. Can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Well, unfortunately, I had shoulder surgery. Uh, that's just one of the consequences of being a football player is, is stuff you have to take care of in the off season. Uh, but doing stuff like this, when I have the time and doing interviews like this, or one of the things I want to do is when orientation comes, I want to go stand at the table and, and greet the students and, and promote St. Mary's to them. Uh, it's tough though with the schedule we have, but I try to do as much as possible uh, with the limited amount of time that I have. It's tough, but something I can work on for sure. Um, had already mentioned the chapel open 24 7. I think a lot of students appreciate that. I appreciate that. Other Catholics appreciate that. Um, how about mass and confession funerals every day? How, how does that help? Well, uh, for me on my schedule, um, it's good. I mean, because <laughs> it's good. I, it's good. Yeah, no question. <laughs> Um, I, I just think having access to the, to the chapel here, um, and, and, and I think we need to get that message out to our students. I'm not sure that they, all of them understand that uh, they have access here um, for prayer, for safety, for security, a place that they can come in good times and bad. Uh, but certainly the, the number of opportunities they have for confession as well as the mass schedule. I think it's very uh, pro-student friendly, student-friendly. student, student friendly. Um, And I know that we, we certainly enjoy coming uh, on Sundays. I think we typically come to the 11 o'clock mass on Sundays. And then every now and then we come to the, to the student mass, which is at, uh, it's at 1 o'clock, right? Yeah. So, uh, but typically as a family, we come at the 11 o'clock mass. But we need to make sure that we get our message out that these doors are open. This is a place of, of safety and security, and that uh, 
Father Denzel has many opportunities for you to, to go to confession. This kind of goes along with that what you're talking about, mass confession, but um, so the next two questions have to do with the students. First, there's a large Catholic population of students on campus. Uh, only about 20% of the students, of those Catholic students, are active as St. Mary's. What message do you have for the student, SFA students who are Catholic? I'm going to start with you, Zach, since you're a Catholic student. Okay. Um, kind of piggybacks on the last question you just asked about it being open 24-7. I think that's the, uh, the attitude St. Mary's has, is it's open arms. We, we, we don't yeah we don't bite uh, and I think a lot of those students that come in here and don't go to St. Mary's they're getting involved in communities because they're scared and this is new this is new for them uh, I remember my first year as a true freshman I was I was scared to death to go outside the door and figure out what the what, what, what the heck I was about to do you know couldn't figure out where I was going to class you know what was I going to do for lunch didn't know what the calf was library um, and so I think that has something to do with it and I think y'all or us, I should say, us having the orientation, the table out there expressing, look, we don't bite, open arms, come be a part of our community. You know, you had a community back home. I know that's what you have, but over here you can start something new. You're gonna be here for the next four or five years of your life. So really come get involved and invest in St. Mary's. Message, coach. Well, I think part of it's our message. We need to get our message out. We need to get our story out. And um, there's a lot of initiatives that students can be involved with that help them grow just as, just as normal college students. And then, of course, obviously, the, the faith-based uh, initiatives that we have as well. But, um, you know, I always say this, that the, the greatest fraternity that there is is a Division I college locker room. But there's also a great fraternity of, 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 of people here that are willing to help you grow in faith, but also, too, to help you through your journey. As Zach mentioned, 90% of the kids that go to Stephen F. Austin are away from home for the first time. And there's a lot of challenges that go with that. There are a lot of uh, uncertainties. And St. Mary's uh, is a, a faith-based community that can help you get over those anxieties, over those difficult times, and give you a place of fraternity or sorority to be uh, very rewarding to you as you go through your journey of four or five years of college. And so, uh, but we need to get our message out, and that's part of why we're here, is we need to get our message out, not just that our doors are open 24 hours a day or that we have mass schedule and we have a confession schedule, but there is so much that I don't even know that goes on with the students. And we need to get that message out in the community. So the more visibility, the more breakfasts, the more things that we can do to appeal to the current students now uh, to get them to just come take a look. And if they don't like it, or that's fine. But just to get our message out that they will come take a look. And, and let me take that a step further. Is to engage in our alumni. Because, like Zach, you know, he's going to leave Nacogdoches. I don't think you're going to stay here too much longer. He's going to probably leave Nacogdoches. And St. Mary's, uh, as you, AJ, and others that, that are students here, will go on with your life and become successful. But also, we need to engage our alumni uh, so that they'll get back. They'll come back. And they'll recognize the experiences that they had while they were here. And that's what we're talking about building a football program foundation that's what grows our foundation as a faith community here on campus pastors come and go students come and go families come and go but the ministry of Jesus Christ through our faith here is going to always be here and so we need the current students engaged and we need those that came through that took advantage to to come back and to give back and that's something that I hope will resonate through our, our visit here today that's a great message. Next question I actually had to do with all the students, which you already touched, and you already touched the past students of London. Yeah. So that's great. Thank you. Well, thank you both again for agreeing to do this interview and for helping St. Mary's Catholic Campus Ministry. Best of luck this upcoming season. Thank you. Thank you.